I competed against seven other logo designers in a design royale. This is a competition in which we had one hour to all execute on the same brief, and the objective was to have the strongest possible design. Half of the designers would then move on to the next round, half would be eliminated, until there was only one remaining who would be crowned the Design Royale Champion and receive 10,000 exposure. Now, of course, I had to go for the win, but just how far did I make it? This video, I'm going to focus on my point of view throughout the competition. I highly advise that you check out Sesso's video. I will put a card up here. Round one, fight. The first brief we got was for Aim Assist. Aim Assist is a software that helps gamers get better at aiming in tactical shooters such as CSGO or Valorant. We had to make a logo that was mechanical and aggressive. For this first brief, I hop into Photoshop and immediately start sketching with my tablet. And I'm right now looking at a couple of ideas related to the aiming and reticles. A lot of people are probably going to go for round shapes. And I felt like it was really important for me to detach myself entirely from the round shapes and just go for something more aggressive. And this perfect aggressive shape to me is the triangle. I also had a take that I liked quite a bit that also used the triangle, but it was within a circle itself. And that encompassing shape, it really just removed parts of the aggression that I was looking for. It wasn't quite as mechanical and I fell back into what I wanted to avoid in the first place. So I went for the orange logo that you see here and I started vectoring it in Illustrator. At this point, time is over. One hour passed and the logos are vectored. Everyone has finished their logo and we have 15 minutes to work on presentation. A bit of a side note here. To me, presentation is a very important part of design. And I felt like 15 minutes to present a logo that took an hour didn't feel right. To me, presentation is as important if not more important than the logo itself. It gives the viewer a lot of context about the decisions that you took, etc. Anyways, 15 minutes have passed. I made my presentation. We are headed to judging for round one. We were very specific about what we were expecting, right? And that all goes into the judgment. Someone who hit all of those boxes for me is Ike. So I'm pushing yes. Ike forward. It feels aggressive enough, especially with the- I was feeling confident and I make it to round two. Now, I do have to notice that Ray's logo also had the use of the triangle in a similar way to mine. It was just a slightly different take on essentially the same idea, but his was better executed and I noticed it and felt a bit threatened. I felt like this guy had potential to take me down. I was looking forward to seeing what he would do in round two. I should note that at this point in the recording, it is 3 a.m. in France. This was ruthless for me. Uh, I was really tired. I stayed up to uh, be able to do this in a American time zone. And being qualified for round two, it means we're going for another one hour. So I'm going into this a bit worried about my creativity and if I'm going to be able to take on the challenge properly. We read the brief to round two. Round two, fight. The brand we're dealing with is Extended. Extended is a streetwear and gaming crossroads. They want to be able to sell products to gamers and they want the gamers to look stylish. It is about streetwear which is something that I've never done and have never worn. Under normal circumstances, a designer that is not familiar with the topic would take time, research, and really dive deep into what they are about to design. There is no time to do this. I have to get going, I have to invent this brand on the fly, and it has to work. Under pressure, I latch on to a phrase that is in the brief that feels really important to me. Peripherals aren't just a device, they are an extension of your personality. And right there, even if I don't know what streetwear looks like, even if I struggle to design this new thing that I'm unfamiliar with, I have a mission for my brand. And when I have this mission in mind, I can make decisions accordingly and I feel much better about what I'm about to do. In fact, I feel really good about it because 
we're not even halfway through the time and I already have the logo and I have a pattern that I'm ready to explore in my mock-up. So as we're headed into the last 30 minutes, I spend it all working on presentation. This is much more the pace that I was looking for, as I said earlier. And because of that, I am able to spend a lot of time just developing this brand directly on the products. The hour passes and we are headed to 15 minutes of extra time to work on presentation. I'm already done with mine. I feel really good about it. I feel confident. I go for a glass of water. Three, two, one, start designing. And I come back and do an extra mock-up. Unfortunately, my program crashes and I am not able to save this mock-up. It's even a miracle that I was able to save the recording at all. Um, so that was a stressful moment at the end of round two. I don't have my second mock-up, but the first one was really strong. I feel confident about it. We're headed to judging. Let's see how I did. There was a design that I thought worked really, really well, but maybe didn't fit the brief as we had hoped. And I think that person is David. George, okay, with, with one eliminated, who was our go-to for this who's gonna move on for the actual 1v1s? When I was looking at the brief, someone that stood out to me and hit every single point, the person that I'm going to move forward is Ray. Okay. Congrats, Ray. Okay. <laughs> so with that, that leaves us with Ike and Vortech. The person that's going to be moving on, facing Ray in the 1v1 and being crowned our next Design Royale champion for logo design in this case, uh, will be... Vortech. My design was too reminiscent of Adidas. Uh, I wasn't able to come up with a idea that was original enough, and it felt like they had seen it already before. Overall, I had a blast, but that's it for me for this video. If you want to see the 1v1 between Vortec and Ray, uh, I invite you to check out Sesso's video right over there. But with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful one.